We are live. Welcome back to another Friday night edition live where we're going to talk about fear mongering Friday. We're going to talk about some interesting data tonight because all of a sudden this week, what, it, what a lot of interesting things happened this week. I think many of you will attest. Okay. Number one, we had on the 6th of February, the CDC launched a new study comparing the efficacy of those cloth face masks that your kids and you are required to wear uh, when you go to work, when you go to the grocery store, and they compare the efficacy of those uh, to N95 respirators and things, there's a lot of flaws in that study. But it was widely shared by all of the science followers who have been critical of podcasters like Joe Rogan and others for sharing disinformation, misinformation. Then during the very same week, what do we have? We have various states throughout, I think there's now half a dozen states or more, most of which are actually blue states, are announcing timelines to reverse their long-standing mask mandates. Now, what's really interesting, I just want to look at the data. I'm not trying to insinuate any conspiracy theories, but at last time I checked, there is some midterm elections coming up uh, maybe later on this year, and perhaps it's time to roll back some of these heavy-handed restrictions because maybe they're not serving a political party the best that it could have. So let's sort of check it. Let's look at the data. Okay, so it's really interesting. So here's data, and this is being aggregated from various uh spots you can find this on google uh this is hospitalizations now to the best of my knowledge the last time that we uh i mean i should say most of the the impetus to mandate masks uh for kids in school and to ensure that we're following the science is to reduce the burden on the healthcare system so if we look here at the people in the icu there's 19,000 people in the icu at, at present well that's actually more than any individuals that were hospitalized during the Delta wave over the end of the summer, the early part of the fall. So why didn't we reverse the mask mandate in the fall? I mean, if look, if, if 18,000 people in the ICU with, with COVID is not that big of a deal, then why didn't we drop the mask mandate in the fall? I mean, this is just logical questions. These are questions that we should be able to ask without people saying that we want someone else's grandma to die or without people saying, you just want the pandemic to go on forever, okay? These are questions that we should be able to ask, okay? Now, if you look at the data, okay, it's trending down. Look at look here at February 5th, 2021, which is the middle part of the screen here. So February 5th, 2021, it, it looks like the cases are actually lower a year ago, and the hospitalizations are lower. People in the ICU, were, the numbers were lower this very time last year, yet the masks stayed on they stayed these masks remember these masks you know the same mask that you put in your pocket the one you know the mask that drops on the floor then you pick it up the mask that when you you pull it down you put it over ch your chin some people hang it on their face and then they pull it up like this. you know they're so effective right i mean they're just uh, life-saving devices why why are we dropping them now when there's more people in the intensive care unit right now presumably Austin from COVID-19 compared to this very same time period one year ago. I, I mean, look, if we're following the science, logic would suggest that we don't drop the mask right now. And, and what's interesting about that is our own CDC is telling the states, hold on, we're going to get to this, get to this study from the CDC in just a moment. But what's interesting is after many people sought to cancel Joe Rogan from Spotify for sharing dis and misinformation, there's a coalition of activists. These are physicians, healthcare practitioners, and dietitians, and doctors, and whatever else. They wrote in a letter to Spotify to say, Joe Rogan, you are spreading misinformation. Yet here we go. We have, this is an article here from the, uh, this is going to be from the New York Times. So I'm going to play this in just a moment. All right. So here we go. We got an article from the New York Times. Okay. So masks coming off in more states, but not everyone is grinning. Now I remember, right? It wasn't that long ago when Joe Rogan was really problematic because he was not trusting the science. He was not listening to the esteemed authorities and our scientific institutions. Well, it turns out that we have political figures that are doing basically what everyone was mad at Joe Rogan for. So again, you can find this on, on uh, New York Times. Some Americans cheered the moves, mostly by Democratic governors, but others questioned the timing with more than 200,000 new virus infections being reported every single day. Okay, so this is a picture of people walking uh, outdoors with facial coverings in New York City. Uh, can you believe it? She's This woman is not even covering. Uh, this He doesn't even have a face to, facial covering on. He's spreading the virus outdoors. This is, uh, this is disappointing. 
that the New York Times would pick that picture. Anyway, so reporting from Chicago, New York's governor said on Wednesday that she was ending the state's indoor mask mandate rules. The governor of Massachusetts announced that face, facial coverings would soon be optional in schools. Optional? Does she just want to kill kids? I mean, this is incredible. And by the day's end, the governor of Illinois, Rhode Island, was, uh, and Washington said they too would loosen coronavirus rules. Okay, uh, let's just let's just follow the data. All right, my friends, why are we loosening the rules now when hospitalizations are <laughs> higher than they've been throughout the whole Delta variant period and then also this very same time period last year? So again, if we're going to get mad at Joe Rogan, why are we not getting mad at the institutions? Uh, I, I'm sorry. Why are we not getting mad at the politicians for uh, not sort of following following the science here and, and trusting the experts? Okay. Now, let's let's continue on with this article here because I think it's quite interesting. So this is uh, Kathy Hochul of New York. She says, the numbers are coming down. It's time to adapt. Uh, and so she uh, has some of the strictest mandates in the entire state. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, a uh, union here with uh, vaccination mandates uh, and, and uh, face mask requirements and the whole thing. You know, your six-year-old needs to show a vaccine passport to do anything in New York, which is, which is quite crazy. So... Um, Again, what I think is, is just really interesting here, and I'll just switch screens and, and we'll go back uh, to all this. It's just the timing of this doesn't sort of coincide with the data. And what's even more ironic about this is the very people that were critical of individuals like Joe Rogan and others for spreading dis and misinformation that is harming individuals, they're not being critical of the policymakers that are circumventing the health institutions and the CDC and Rochelle Walensky and others are saying, hey, it's too early to ditch the masks. But yet the political figures are doing this. So where's the coalition of activists who care so much about science going after the politicians? That's what I don't get. And again, uh, so look, you all know that I've been pointing out the various inconsistencies throughout this entire pandemic. And yet we have this public that doesn't trust the institutions and the policymakers for this very reason, this is why. You know, for example, California right now, they're, they're under a state of emergency. The, the governor extended the emergency declaration in the state of California due to COVID-19. Uh, such a big emergency that the Super Bowl is being held in Los Angeles. If you didn't know this, yes, this is a, a, a game that's nationally televised. 500 million people throughout the world will be watching the Super Bowl on Sunday. Being held in a state where there is supposedly an emergency declaration because there is a, a crisis. Now, how, how does this make any sense? How, how could California have, I mean, obviously it's financial, it's political, it's all this, but you're like, why haven't you dropped the emergency declaration in the state where the Super Bowl is being held and there's going to be tens of thousands of people coming in, flying in, watching the game. There's going to be vendors, there's going to be all this stuff. And you're not telling me that these people are going to be wearing facial coverings for the entire football game and socially distancing and every, I mean, give me a break. Okay, so these are the inconsistencies. And people get mad at me, Mike, you're talking about politics. Look, politics has, has become baked into health policy, unfortunately. So I think it's okay that we talk about these issues and question the inconsistencies. That's what we, we're looking for, truth. We're looking for, for just give me the facts. Don't BS me. Don't tell me there's an emergency that yet you're hosting a Super Bowl in, in a state because the virus is so dangerous. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Okay. So with that being said, friends, I want to welcome you back. Thank you for being here live on a Friday. I actually have just a little bit of bourbon here. I'm going to take a quick sip as you are here with me, which is great. I only have a little bit of bourbon on the weekends and I'm not endorsing ethanol consumption. Uh, I'm just saying it's just a nice way to sort of just a little thing that I do sometimes on Fridays. But thank you for being here live. If you're enjoying the content, hit that like button. You can share this with a friend or family member. Look, this might be our last live fear mongering Friday. We've done about five or six of these. They're kind of fun. But honestly, the pandemic is over. So we are going to get back to just fasting, nutrition, exercise, science, gut microbiome, circadian rhythms. There's so many great things to talk about. But uh, this pandemic has been like high level comedy for me. I mean, it's, it's so, uh, and I'm not saying that because I like hearing that people are being hospitalized. I'm just saying the societal response has just been so inconsistent and incongruent. It's now become comical. And I, I really do feel for people that got severely harmed by this pathogen. 
and all that. I'm not trying to make fun of that whatsoever. Uh, I'm just saying our response has been so all over the place. But let's get to some data. I would like to share with you some interesting things because I was actually on a, a, a meeting, a school board meeting here in Washington State, and I gave a presentation. Uh, and I'm tr I've been trying to get the facial coverings off children because there's really no data to suggest that somehow wearing poorly fitted surgical face masks or cloth facial coverings does anything for children whatsoever in terms of offering protection for a virus that doesn't significantly harm them. And I can share with you some of the data here. And this is actually right from the American Academy of Pediatrics. And if you look here at the cumulative deaths over the past 17 months in various states, uh, you can see Michigan has had 34 children that have died from COVID-19. Uh, the state of Arizona has had uh, 56 children. And the percentage of children that are dying is just infinitesimally small compared to the number of adults. As many of you know, uh, this particular virus, particularly variants prior to Omicron, uh, more severely impacted individuals who had cardiometabolic diseases in advanced age. Uh, so children have been relatively unharmed. Uh, this was even before massive vaccination rollouts. So that being said, I want to share with you just some data that I used to give a presentation for the school board because I really don't think it's fair to make kids wear ineffective facial coverings uh, and, and not get the so-called protection that people think they're getting, uh, and yet they get all the downside associated with not being able to see people's faces, not being able to say the words like L or the, right? When, you, when you're learning to speak and articulate language, you look at people's faces, right? Some of you that have traveled to different countries, when someone is talking to you, like when I go to, to you know, Chile or if I go to Mexico and uh, se habla un, un poco de español, I'm looking at the tongue and the mouth and I'm trying to sort of use my eyes to visualize what people are saying. Children are doing that too. When you watch, when you're talking to children, they're often looking at your mouth to further sort of intelligize the words that you're articulating and saying. And so when you put a, ineffective facial covering over that that really doesn't offer any sort of great protection, right? If we're going to be very logically consistent, then perhaps making kids wear N95s forever, right? Perpetually, uh, if we're going to be serious about this, because that's going to be the only sort of solution that would actually block transmission of Omicron. But the challenge of that is, of course, logistically, what's the environment? What's the effect size? How much protection would you really be giving kids uh, and all that? I mean, that's just not going to happen, I don't think anyone would vote for that. However, the point is, you know, these cloth face masks are not really offering a lot of protection, uh, and there's a lot of downside in terms of you know language. Uh, they're unable to to articulate. Uh, they're dirty. And these kids are like putting them down. And it, the worst of all, and I, I I shared this on the school board meeting, and I asked the physician that was there, who's a PhD who practices at Fred Hutch. I said, um, his name is Christopher. I said, Christopher, are you? you know, do you understand the logistics of how kids are eating their lunches in the schoolroom? And he said, um, he, he was kind of puzzled at my question. I said, so look, you're making kids wear masks for three hours consistently. And then all the kids, there's about 26 kids in my daughter's class. They all eat lunch in the same room, but they take their face mask off for 25 minutes. They're allowed to eat lunch with no facial covering. That is plenty of time, my friends. If you are, if you are transmitting a virus, if you're, if you're, if you're infectious, 25 minutes in a closed room is enough to infect other people. So are we going to pretend that there's zero transmission during the time that all the kids are eating lunch? By the way, 24 of the 26 kids in my daughter's class all eat the school lunches. And I said the school lunches are diabetic forming obesogenic food. So you care so much about this virus that doesn't really impact kids, but yet you're feeding them processed food that is enriched in uh, industrial seed oils and sugar and everything else. Like you don't care about childhood obesity, autoimmunity, dementia. You don't care about diabetes or hypertension or cardiovascular disease or fatty liver disease. Like you don't care about any of those diseases, but you care so much about this disease that again, our own institutions, including the American Academy of Pediatrics has found statistically does not impact kids. So anyway, uh, I can just tell you that the call went absolutely nowhere. It went nowhere. It, it was really, it was kind of un, kind of sucked uh, because these people seemingly don't care, and and that's challenging. But it seems that in Washington State we have our, our uh, school superintendent. His name is Chris uh, Radical, I believe. He is finally pushing. And I, I hope people are getting the message that there is unintended harms with these masks for kids uh, and they need to come off. Okay, now a lot of you have your kids homeschool, so maybe this doesn't even apply to you and that 
might be something that we're looking for in the future. But what I want to share with you uh, is how to actually find this data. Um, okay, so I just added. All right, so here we are. Uh, what we're going to do, my friends, is we're we're here over at the American Academy of Pediatrics. All right. Uh, this is the American Academy of Pediatrics. And how do you get to this? I, I, I want to share this with you because I get this question a lot. If you have kids or you have nieces, nephews, and things like that, you go to aap.org. And then right here, there's this critical updates on COVID, okay? So you go here. And then what you want to do is you want to look here for uh, COVID cases, data, and, and all that. Now, this is data that you can bring to your school board meetings and say, why are we doing all these things that we're doing uh, for a disease that doesn't significantly impact kids? Because guess what? You have the full report. This is updated every week, okay? So this is a PDF. And what this will do is actually share with you uh, all of the state-by-state -state na data. Now, there's a lot of people who actually believe like tens of millions of kids have died from COVID, okay? I don't know how they say that, but they do. Uh, this is because the media has been feeding people a lot of anecdotes and misinformation uh, for a long time, and no one seemingly cares about that. But but here's this page right here. So you go down to these tables and stuff, and they tell you state by state cumulative deaths. So I said to our school board, I said, you know, I live in the state of Washington, where over the past 24 months, there has been a cumulative 17 children that have died. Uh, these are all the cumulative COVID-19 deaths. You can do the math here. It's 0.17%. And there has been thousands of kids that have died from various other causes, uh, abuse, violence, car accidents, the whole thing. So why are we doing all this information? Uh, I, I'm sorry. Why are we imposing all of these so-called restrictions and policies um, when kids are statistically not really negatively impacted uh, by all of these things? So anyway, you can go to your state. Now, if, what's curious here is I, I, sometimes I play around with this data and just sort of uh, try to run some numbers. Look at Florida. Remember, Florida has been the DeSantis variant, right? This is the state where just people are dying in the streets, right? Kids have been not wearing masks. There's been only 36 children that have died uh, throughout the whole pandemic. So let's look at a state like California, shall we say. California, the science followers, they all live in California. Wow, 51 children have died in the state of California. Now, I know there's different, you know, you need to adjust this for population and the whole thing. But let's look at the percentage of children, for example, that have died from COVID out of all of the deaths is 0.06%. Let's look at Florida. Well, I'll be damned. I'll be damned. Kids have not been wearing masks in Florida. And guess what? The same percentage of all the deaths are relatively the, the identical figures uh, in the states of California and Florida. Here's, here's an even more interesting percentage, right? Uh, if you look at the, if you look here at the percent of child cases resulting in death in the states of Florida, 0.01%, okay? It's essentially a rounding error. It's a rounding error, my friends. So to to sit here and say that that all these restrictions are somehow, uh, you know, really uh, protecting the kids and they're, they're doing all this stuff, there's really not any evidence to support that. So what I suggest when you're talking with parents in your community that are scared about things, when you're talking about having family over and then someone wants to have N95s for the whole family, okay? It's helpful to have data to share with people because, uh, my friends, I don't think some schools are going to pull the mask off. Remember, right, we have all these politicians, uh, you know, on the West Coast, especially in then New York and all these blue states are dropping their or announcing timelines to drop their mask mandates. But remember, it wasn't too long ago that the federal government announced, announced free N95 respirators for every citizen in America, right? This was only less than two weeks ago. So literally, we've gone from, ah, states are d dumping the masks, you know, and everything, you know, and, but what about all these free masks? 400 million N95s. And now you have states just saying, face masks. Yeah, it's time to move on. So <laughs> how does the pendulum go from, we need better masking. That's the future of this endem endemic to, yeah, masks are over. We're done with it. And yet the scientists, and again, I bring this home because there's all this controversy about podcasters and comedians not following the science and not, not taking the pandemic seriously in the whole thing. Well, as it turns out, uh, you know, we have politicians that are circumventing the scientists. Uh, and, and to me, I think this is just inconsistent. That's what we're looking for. That's what I am looking here for. Look, 
if this data on children showed that thousands of kids were dying in the state in these states, this would be a totally different conversation, right? There would be a, more of a, a bigger impetus to to offer mitigation strategies. But when you look at states have 11 children that have died in 24 months, uh, third, and I'm not trying to minimize 11 child deaths. I mean, that's that's a lot. But, you know, if that was your kid, you'd be devastated. But we need to accept the fact that that most of these kids that have died from COVID-19 have, have other health issues. I mean, that's just the, that's just the reality of the situation. Okay. So let's talk about a few more things, friends. Uh, just quick plug. Since you're here, friends, we do have the electrolyte sticks that are available now. These are phenomenal because you're getting your electrolytes, you're getting your chelated magnesium, you're getting potassium, you're getting calcium. It's an amazing formulation. Plus, you're getting taurine and creatine. So you can take this intro workout. You can take a pre-workout. It's a little stick pack. You can travel with it. Uh, they taste phenomenal. Zero carbs in this. Uh, doesn't impact your blood sugar. Doesn't break your fast. Use the coupon code podcast over at Myoscience. These electrolyte sticks are phenomenal. Um, now, Here's what I think is, is quite interesting because literally this was just published last week and this is our own CDC. Uh, and Vinay Prasad and others have, have talked a lot about this study. So this was a retrospective study where essentially uh, individuals who had tested positive during a certain time window in the state of California, uh, they, were, they had health officials call them and say, hey, you know, it was a questionnaire like, hey, Sally, it looks like you're, you just tested positive for COVID. You know, over the last several weeks, when you went out, did you always wear a mask? Did you sometimes wear a mask? Oh, and Sally, what could, what type of mask did you wear? And they were comparing and contrasting that to individuals who got a COVID test but didn't test positive. And so there's a lot of sort of challenges with that because the, the as Vinay and other people have talked about, you know, the, the population, we're not comparing apples to apples. But again, what is so interesting is so many people that I know that live in California, the state that just announced they're going to drop their mask mandates pretty soon, uh, possibly even for kids, as long as they're immunized or whatever. Uh, they were sharing this study. This was trending on Twitter uh, <laughs> just a few days ago. So those people are not upset with the politicians for dropping the mask mandates, but they are so excited about the study. And that, to me, is just so bizarre because where's the consistency and the logic uh, and and everything like that? Like one minute you're saying, oh, we we... We need to wear these masks and oh my gosh, we should all be wearing respirators. And then you're like saying, oh, well, the politician said we can dump the mask. So then I'm, I'm over it. You know, I, it, this to me <laughs> is just so bizarre. I, I've never, we've never lived in a time where it's just like literally people just whatever the policymakers say, they, they sort of go with that. It's like wherever the puck is going. Whoever, whatever the media says, like they just, they change their tune. So the consistency, uh, sort of the, the mental rubric that they like to follow and, and, and following the data, um, as, as long as sort of the media is talking about something else, they're on to the next and they sort of forget that because I don't know, I, I just don't understand how you could applaud a study like this and say, oh my gosh, yes, we all need to be wearing N95 respirators. That's the solution. That's the ticket because that is 83% more effective or whatever uh, compared to no facial covering. And then a few days later, start getting excited that the facial coverings are coming off because the policymakers said it was time, even though the data shows that, well, guess what? Uh, <laughs> ICU visits for COVID are, are quite high right now. Anyway, um, I just want to share these things with you because I'm sure you're thinking this. You're like, this This sometimes doesn't really make a lot of sense. So that's where my head is at. Let me check your, let, let me look at your comments here to see um, what you think. I think this, this stuff is just so interesting. Uh, the inconsistencies are all over the place. Okay. All right. So we have... Uh, Matthew says, uh, in Jefferson County, which is Denver, which I used to live in Denver, uh, Denver's a great spot, Fish, facial coverings are being dropped tonight at midnight. Okay, so that's it. Uh, so elections are coming up, which is probably a main reason for the mandate. Uh, Aaron says, it's all going to disappear. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the election virus is, is yeah, it's, it's quite interesting. Okay. A lot of interesting stuff going on, friends. Uh, I think a lot of you agree here. So here in Guatemala, the government just signed that it was illegal to not be immunized. You have to be immunized. Okay, uh, quite 
quite interesting. Um, LA is dirty though. LA is dirty. <laughs> Purple girl. I'm with you, man. I am. I am with you. Um, Purple girl says half the people where I live wear a mask. Um, in Washington state, it's everywhere. I see it's, it's incredibly high. I can't even believe it. How many people uh, wear masks out here? Um, it was never about logic. Yes. Facts come out in 55 years. Yeah, we can, dude, it's only 55 years, guys. Just be a little patient, okay? We'll know more about that in 55 years. Um, take a sip of whiskey for me too. Yes, I have a little bourbon here. Don't always drink bourbon, just periodically. that will be fun to, uh, to have a little bit uh, tonight. Aaron says, uh, the massive corruption is so evident by now. More and more uh, being uncovered. Yeah, I mean... If I would have made this video, by the way, I've been making these videos and, and, and questioning the narrative um, since January 2020. If I would have made this video in June, because I remember I made a similar video where I talked about, you know, I went from Washington to Idaho and I didn't have to wear a facial covering in Idaho. Um, I had about 200 people unsubscribed from that video. And then there were so many dislikes. It was unbelievable. So... Uh, anyway, friends, thank you for being here live on a Friday night fear mongering. Like I said, I think the pandemic is basically over. You know, people have exploited uh, this virus in the position to leverage power. I, there's all sorts of, I don't know all the motives, you know, and the intentions, but it's been exploited by many people. And I think people are, are done playing pandemic. And I think this thing is over. So on Friday night, we might review data and actual science um, that, that doesn't have to do with masking or the whatever whatever else uh, talk about intermittent fasting talk about exercise and all the fun stuff and so that we're going to be getting more and more back to that um but i just had to share <laughs> this inconsistencies with you and also let you know more about the uh, american academy of pediatrics if you're a parent you might want to go back and rewatch that so you can access the data because i don't think this conversation is, is over i you know from from governors, you know, they might relax things, but diff, county by county, there's going to be uh, there's going to be differences. And uh, I will let you know, we we've actually sued the school district that many of my parents and their friends and so forth uh, uh, have kids in the school district. So we've sued the school district, demanding that they show us the actual data that the Department of Health is following in regards to implementing all of these restrictive measures. And we're waiting to hear back on that. So I'll keep you posted on how those go. Um, but I think it's time that we all rise up and say, these kids cannot, these masks are not getting the benefit that people think they are, uh, but they're getting a lot of the downsides uh, associated with wearing them, uh, and that's not good. Okay, so what else do we have, my friends? Jay says, my wife and I walked into Costco here uh, in California, uh, <laughs> uh, and the door person offered us a mask. We said, no, thank you. I think we're one of the only few unmasked in the store. Yeah, so what I've noticed too, because I don't wear a mask when I go out. I know I'm that guy. Oh my God, spreading. Look, I've shared with you guys and gals, my antibody levels, my T-cell immunity. I've been exposed to Omicron now about seven times, have yet to get sick. So don't tell me that I'm out there killing people and spreading a virus uh, because I have been exposed multiple times and never even felt symptomatic. Um, so there is this thing called an immune system and your immune system re remembers past exposure to pathogens. But anyway, when I go out uh, in public and I, I don't wear a mask, I don't have people giving me the flack that they gave literally just weeks ago. So I really feel that most people, they don't want to be wearing them either, but they don't want to put up a fight. So uh, I'm with you, Jay. John says, it feels like we're experiencing a type of domestic terrorism to rope us into acting against our will due to fear. Yeah, it's There's a lot of crazy stuff going on. Renee says, who is really allowed about, she's talking about a word that we cannot talk about on these things. Okay. Um, yeah, well, friends, uh, it's, it's a quick one. Quick Friday night fear mongering. As always, uh, thank you for being here. Uh, we have some really good content coming this weekend with regards to exercise and, and all of that. Um, like I said, it, it's it's kind of fun that, you know, the science, and I'll just, uh, in closing here, um, the science has changed so much in the sense that the reason why this channel, we started talking about COVID, uh, was because the public health officials 
didn't really mention practical things and tangible things that we can all and should and could be doing to improve immunologic health and reduce uh, you know, vulnerabilities to this pathogen. So I wanted to, to be a, a voice, an outlet to share with you the studies on exercise and low-carb nutrition and sleep and stress management and sauna bathing and all those things that can reduce the likelihood of getting a really severe infection. So that was number one. That's why we started talking about COVID. Number two, the scientific publications and the journals, uh, Clinical Me Metabolism and Endocrinology and various Nature Endocrinology, uh, various journals that I like to lean on to share with you metabolic health related science, there was a hiatus in the publication due to funding, due to people not being able to go to their lab and conduct these studies. And so that was part of why this channel has focused uh, over the last several years, you know, a little bit more on COVID. But now that the journals are coming back and there's really a lot of new interesting research emerging about longevity and anti-aging and mTOR inhibitors, uh, offsetting sarcopenia, the loss of muscle mass that happens with age, uh, it, it's time to get back to that. And so I think a lot of you have pandemic fatigue and are sick of hearing about this stuff. And But anytime there's inconsistencies and incongruencies in the data, right, in the science, I like to share that with you here because I think it's just crazy, right, how literally, anyway, you get where I'm going. But Everyone thought that we're going to be wearing N95s until the end of time. And then just like this, although there's no new evidence to support this, sh this rapid shift, the masks are coming off. Anyway, friends, uh, I'm just glad that, that um, kids are going to be able to go to school without facial coverings anymore. Um, having a, a nine-year-old daughter, and I bike her to school every day, and I pick her up every day. Seeing these kids walk around with facial coverings on their bikes it's hard. I mean, it's, it's really hard to see these kids. Um, they, they need to come off. It's not good for the kids. Uh, you know, people can do whatever they want, but they, and now what's funny is, you know, the medical director over at CNN, uh, is talking about, and there's various other people that are being interviewed. We're now talking about one way masking. Like, look, if you want to wear your mask, because you have a, look, if you have a, you know, let's just say you have a prosthetic leg, Let's say you you have a uh, someone donated a kidney to you, so you're on immunosuppressants, right? You can wear a mask. You can wear your N95. You know, if you're if you're 80 and you're going to a busy grocery store, wear a mask. Like it makes sense. It's fine. But to make every single person do it under the guise that it's only going to work if everyone does it, does that even make sense? I mean, that come on. And so that's where I think, look, if your child is overweight or has a health issue then yeah, they can wear a mask in the school classroom. That's fine. No one is saying that they can't. Now, that's where I think this, this all this sort of psychosis that has, this spell that's been cast on society. It's like, why didn't we come to this agreement where it's voluntary? Like, to each their own. Do what you want. Like, no one is stopping anyone from smoking a pack of or a carton of cigarettes every day, going to McDonald's, not exercising. No one is stopping that. They are increasing their individual risks for developing future disease, right? And the same thing is true, uh, you know, with this, this this whole virus thing. Like, dude, if you don't, if you're unhealthy, you, you, your probability of getting really sick is, is, is much higher, right? And I think the media has really painted this picture that we all have to do all this stuff or nothing works. And we've all had interactions with people publicly, whether it's sitting on an airplane next to someone who says, hey, if you don't put it up over your nose, everyone on the airplane is going to get sick. Uh, you know, my mask only works if your mask is on too. But what's funny now is the science is changing such that, you know, people acknowledge that there's this thing called one-way masking. If you're vulnerable, if you have an immune issue, you can wear a mask and that mask should protect you, especially like an N95 respirator, okay? Problem solved. People that want to wear a mask because they check their mail, no, fine. You might look silly. <laughs> you might not be able to get as much oxygen as other people who are just breathing fresh air, but how, how you can do whatever you want. Just like you can drive to McDonald's and, and drink uh, extra large sugar drinks and eat fried food and no one's, it's like, that's it's your body. It's your choice. It's your life. And so we need to get back to that. And somehow the pandemic caused people to believe that we all had to do all these things or uh, nothing worked. Anyway. What do we have? What questions do y'all have? Anyway, friends, thank you for being here. Thank you for the, thank you for hitting that like button. Um, it's fun to to chat <laughs> about these things, isn't it? 
again, the inconsistencies are just what drive me bananas. Um, all right, all. Um, any questions here? Okay, there's a there's a comment here from Marilyn. Marilyn says, "Our kids uh, at school here on the east coast of Canada are wearing masks outside." And I keep saying, it's okay to take your mask off and breathe fresh air. I do that as well, Marilyn. But you know what? These poor kids are indoctrinated by their parents. And it's, it's really a shame that parents have been using children as a shield for them to so-called stay safe. So they've been, they've been indoctrinating these kids and treating these kids that are their, their legacy as vectors of disease that they must protect themselves, i.e. the kids must do all these things to never get any transmission going on so that the parents feel safe. And that to me is so selfish. You're robbing a child of the ability to breathe and read nonverbal cues and expressions and talk and articulate and do all that so that you feel safe. That is selfish. That is super selfish. I don't care what anyone says. Just think about that. Uh, it just that we we've never done that before, and so we need to. If we want to keep our kids safe and protect them and set them up best for the future, we want to give them the childhood that we've experienced. Right, the ability to go hug another kid, to talk, to to ha be able to watch their teacher's mouth articulate words, uh, and and not have to be, um, you know have this ball and chain of a facial covering uh, to appease the parents. I mean, that's just, it's just not right. Anyway. Um, all right, all. Well, we have some really great weekend, uh, really great content coming this weekend for you all about fitness and exercise. I think you're going to dig it. Um, so thank you all for tuning in. Thanks for that like button. Thank you for your comments. And we will catch you all later. Bye now.